Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, literally, this didn't matter as far as the result of the match. But still, um, people in general, <clears throat> like everybody, makes a lot of mistakes in the end game. And the worst for, like, the thing that people do the most often that's wrong in the end game is when they're slightly worse or clearly worse. They need to defend like a monster and they'll draw. They don't defend like a monster. They they fall apart, you know, like, not, I mean, like, they just lose immediately. This is typical. Oh. Especially when it's the lower rated player. Now, I've said this before, but you guys weren't listening then either. Boris Gelfand, in his genius book that just came out a few months ago, I haven't seen the book, but I know it's a genius book. He says something that I say all the time. When the engine says it's all zeros, that doesn't mean it's equal. <laughs> that means... If two engines are playing and they both play perfect, it's a draw. It could be... They put a little carrot in here, which is weird. So I'm like choking on my own rage. It could be one side can make any legal move and draw and the other side has to play perfect every move. That's not equal. Okay. And this is just such a... a this, okay. So here, only white can win. Okay, if somebody's going to win, it's white. If, if engines are playing, it's a draw. Okay? So, and now Sarich, he's the guy that got totally destroyed by Kasparov. I don't mean Kasparov beat him in chess. I mean Kasparov ruined his tournament. So as you all know, some of them don't know. Sarich did really well in the rapid, and then he teamed up with Kasparov and their score is counted as one score. And, it, and not a joke, on Twitter and in real life, Kasparov apologized to Sarich. He's like, sorry, man. No. He, he was the weakest link goodbye. Yeah. Sarich? Don't tell me how to pronounce Sarich. Well, it is Sarich, yeah. Okay. Anyway. <clears throat> so if the game's a draw then Sherrod still wins the match. So he's just playing, you know, try to win a drawn position. Okay, rook g8 check. That is correct. King takes f3, all zeros. h7, rook h8, obviously. Rook here, all zeros. f4, all zeros. Rook f7, all zeros. And as my friend Aviv likes to say, the game should have been drawn until now. I gotta get another period. This one's not cold enough. Come on, stop getting in my weight here. Ugh. All right. Now, when I have the engine running in the background when I'm doing analysis, I have it defaulted at three moves. So it shows you the best three moves for whoever's turn it is. And the best three moves are all zeros. King e4, rook c8, rook a8. That leads me to believe that rook b8 and rook e8 also draw. Because otherwise that would make, and rook d8. That wouldn't make a lot of sense that rook a8 and rook c8 draw and the other ones don't. Okay. And it's all zeros. It's a draw, etc. mainly etc. So the easiest draw is king e4. Uh, king g4, obviously. I don't see another move that makes any sense. King e5. If you play rook takes pawn, I play rook takes pawn. So obviously that's a draw. So you have to play king g5 if you want to win, if you want to try to win. And now, what's funny is every move draws. Every move draws. King d5 draws, f3 draws. Never play f3 drawing. And the reason is the only way for white to win is to move his king up. Because you can never take this pawn because I take that. As soon as you move your king up, I can safely sacrifice my rook and draw. This is easily the best move. Okay, if you take it, I take this. So you go here. And then I just take on h7 or play king e4. It doesn't matter. 
and then I take on h7, next move it's a dead draw. Okay, and there's other ways to draw too, but Black lost in a very humorous way. The reason he lost is because instead of going here attacking the rook, forcing white to defend his rook, otherwise the black king just comes over here, he played king e2 because he wanted to escort his pawn home. And strangely, that move loses. And in my opinion, I can't prove it. I can't prove it. I think black thought every move draws. I'll play that move. That's one of the moves that draws, but it loses. It actually loses for two reasons. King g4 and king g2 both win. King g4, obviously king takes pawn is winning. So you have to play f3, never play f3. Now white only has one move that wins. Who can find the winning move for white as I eat another tofu, Todd? Um, delicious. You got one winning move. Most of you got it. King g3. Everybody Wang Chung tonight. Now, if it was White's move here, White would play Rook E7 check. King takes F3, and the game is over. I don't know how to stop that. If you play F2, I take on F2 with check and put my Rook back on F7. Truth hurts. So now it's just the game's over. Yeah. Checking's really nice, forcing the King away. Yeah, and then he resigned here. Yeah, I mean you're you're too slow and and too old. And then rook, you know, somewhere. I don't know. Oh, too old, too slow. So the the guy was drawing until like the very end. It would have been nice to draw, and some would say, some, like, well, he loses the match anyway. But you know, you wanna, you know, show some endgame prowess and understanding and so forth. Probably he was in time trouble, and probably he was deflated because he needed to win the game to tie the match, and there was a 0% chance of that. So maybe he literally didn't care. Maybe. Doubt it. Probably cared. All right. Uh, <laughs> I meant King G3, 5 was a typo. D Danny Chess with the possible untruth. Possible. Yeah. Chess is hard.